All right. Good evening. Good evening. Word on the street. We are going to get into a quick Bible study tonight. I'm waiting for a friend of mine uh, that is going to join us on this broadcast tonight. Uh, so we're going to get into the book of Isaiah. So if you are familiar with the Bible, the book of Isaiah is found in the Old Testament. Now, we understand that the prophet Isaiah was an important prophet. A lot of what the prophet Isaiah talked about is dealing with what we see happening today. The reason why the prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah are my favorite prophets is because you can see parallels of what we're going through and seeing today in this world that line up with scripture. So when you open up the scriptures and you see, you can identify what he's talking about in Isaiah with today. So tonight, I want to deal with something that we don't really get anybody that ever really wants to deal with this, because they call this chauvinistic. They call this type of teaching or thinking as it's it, it's historic. Well, then you must be calling the most high uh, uh, historic, which he is historic, because he is from the beginning of time. But however, today, we got to be careful on how we say things because we don't want to offend this person or offend that person. But then how can we stand up as Christians or people that call ourselves followers of the Most High and we look at the scripture and he gives us a game plan. He tells us exactly what his plan was from beginning of time as it relates to man and female. We look at from beginning of time now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've studied it out, and I love to deal with this because it, it plays into what I'm going to talk about tonight when we get into Isaiah. But we got to look at the fact that if you look at the book of Genesis from the chapter 1 to 9, you will see there is no evidence in the book of Genesis that I can see where the Most High directly spoke to Eve. Now, you can check me out, fact check me. I know that's the new thing today is what we call fact check. Well, fact check me on the Bible. How about that? We fact checked on Diddy. We fact check on everything else. But what about the book? There's no biblical evidence of the Most High ever saying one word to Eve. In fact, the command that was handed down to Adam was handed down before Eve was even created. Study me out. So it tells you that from beginning of time, women have had an issue with leadership. That's why we have today so many issues with the word submit. Nobody likes that word. Why? Even though it's in the Bible. See, you can't be two-faced and say I'm a Christian on this level and I'm not on this level. He sets order. It's been order since day one, order since the beginning of time. You understand? He brought Eve to Adam. But Adam said, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. The most I didn't say that. So we have to look at the what the parallel of what he was trying to establish early in the beginning. If you cannot come from God's factory, Yahuwah's factory, as what he created you as, then there's no misfits. You understand? He makes things fit perfectly. He told Adam and he told Eve to be fruitful and to multiply. And then he comes back later and he tells Noah, and his wife, and their sons and wives to do the same. Well, unless you can multiply, let me be careful for all of you that I might offend. Unless you can multiply, then it is not a legitimate union, according to the scripture. You can be mad at me. You can be offended. I don't give a damn. I'm so sick and tired of being, we got to be all about somebody's feelings. Oh, I, he said this the wrong way. Well, that's what the scripture says. Don't get mad at me. And if you are a Christian standing behind anything else besides his 
original order, then you are serving something else other than the most high. You are serving Baal. You are going after the ways of this world. That's the reality. This is why the enemy does not like Minister M.L. Kimball, because I dance all over his turfs when I come to you with these Bible studies. The Most High sets order. And whenever you disrupt his order, then you can expect destructive results on every level. Now, I don't see this guy showing up, so I got to keep going. I'm going to share my screen here, and I want you to see the scripture. The scripture says, Isaiah 3 and 12 says, shoutish leaders oppress my people. So let's take a look at what we consider childish. Now, when the reporters asked Kamala a question a few weeks ago, they got it on recording. You can look it up yourself. We're not going to even look the scam up tonight. But when the reporter asked her a question, she says, what did you just fall out of a coconut tree? And laughed it off. Now, to you, it doesn't bother you. It's not serious to you. To me, it's childish. This economy is in the worst position than it's ever been since I don't know when, since before I was born. This is, we're headed in the direction worse than it was with George W. Now, I know you can remember George W., but let's get back to the scripture. Let's get back to the tapes. The scripture says, childish leaders oppress my people. Who's oppressing you? If they are oppressing you, then they are childish. There is enough childish leaders in every single political party, every single courtroom, judges, attorneys, policemen. I don't give a damn what position you look at. We've got a situation where we can look at places where they're filled with nothing but childish leaders. Huh? You can't tell me this doesn't line up with today. Then he says, and women rule over them. Now, you show a few people that say, oh, this is wrong. Why did he make it a point to put in the scripture? He's not saying this in a positive manner. He's reflecting this in a negative manner, which goes back to my original point that he sets order. You can't get me to line up with Kamala because it goes against the Most High's order. I don't care. What do you stand for? Don't talk to me about my color because whenever you say that I got to vote because of my color, it makes me it lets me know how racist you are. And if I thought it was about the things that I felt in my heart and in my spirit, what I believed in, my beliefs. Not because of your skin color. You're going to sit here and tell me a grown man can walk in the bathroom with my granddaughter and I've got to be okay with that? As a Christian, you should be offended. Grown man can play sports with your daughter and knock her out on the field and get away with it? You should be offended with that. How do you call yourself a Christian? You can don't give me all from... They both are scams in my book, independent from Mark B. Kimball, because I can't even see where the benefit of either one of them are. I've been through Trump 2025, playing 2020, Project 2020. It's a scam. If it, it happens, and he can say all day long, I don't have anything to do with it. Well, your whole uh, previous cabinet does. The people you had on your staff Created Project 2025, and you're going to sit there and tell me you don't know nothing about it. Donald, stop it. You're a scam. Kamala, you're a scam. And you Christians are scams too because you just justify stuff. That's why you make it okay to celebrate Halloween when you know it's demonic. That's why you make it okay to do everything else besides what the scripture says. And then you turn around and say, oh, I'm blessed. No, you're not. No, you're not. 
What makes you think you're blessed? Because you have some things. You are blessed when you know that I've got to follow this scripture inside and out in order for my internal soul to be saved. That's when you know you're blessed. If you walk and live this life like you are never going to die, woe unto you when you meet the most high. Because you will give an account. Oh, yes. He's watching your thoughts. He knows your actions. The things that you are doing where you're trying to hide it, nobody knows. Oh, he knows. For the scripture says that the angels are keeping record of everything you say and do. Why are they doing that? Because you're going to have to give an account. So I don't care if this offends you, it makes you mad. I could really care less. This is in the scripture. Oh, my people, your leaders mislead you. So the scripture is telling us that he has a problem with the woman leadership. Now, I didn't say a woman can't preach. I didn't say a woman cannot be an effective leader in a, uh, 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 you know, organization where there's still male leadership. What I am saying is the most high sets order. And if you sit up and tell me that it's not a problem when it goes contrary to what the scripture says, I have to ask you, are you really saved? Because that's the problem. Nobody wants to be different. Nobody wants to separate themselves. Nobody wants to say, no, he said this. A friend of mine told me the other day, oh, it's, it's not a sin to have sex on, on, uh, with your wife on the Sabbath day. I said, says who? The scripture says it is. It is. Why? Because the Sabbath day was set aside for him. You're supposed to be resting and going in the scriptures and learning the book. How are you, how are you uh, uh, glorifying him getting buns? You're not. You're glorifying yourself. So the reality is we've got to get back to what the scripture says. And this is why I am against Kamala. It's not about how I feel about some of the things that everybody else is saying. It's about what the scripture says. And as a minister, I cannot stand against something that I know goes against the scriptures. Doesn't matter if you don't like it, so what? I'm to the point in my life at 40 years old with the so what mentality. I'm gonna speak to you the word if you like it or not. And if you don't like me because of it, I don't care. I truly could care less, and that goes for anybody from anywhere. You're not going to make me compromise because you want to go to hell. Enjoy your ride. But as a preacher, you better not expect me to, to, to compromise and settle for your garbage. Not in these last days. So if you don't want to study it out more, get into that book. And read that whole chapter. He's prophesying about today. If Kamala gets in that office, it clearly goes against what the scripture says. I'm the minister, M.L. Campbell. Be blessed on purpose.